Okay, this is starting to come together here, and I think in this video we're going to finish off our styling, and one new thing we'll learn is the class selector. It gives us a little more control on selecting specific elements of style. Um, so let's go do it. So if we look in our notes, let's start by doing, let's do the base, base font of Verdana. So remember, base font is what we can put inside of the body here. Do font family, and I'm just going to look for Verdana. And we'll just do that whole family, right? It'll look for Verdana. If it can't find it, it'll use Geneva and then Tahoma and then have generic sans serif. Okay, so if we save that and go back to our website here, now all of the font on the website is Verdana. All right. But if we go to our notes, the H1s and H2s were supposed to be a Gill Sans font with a letter spacing. Okay, well, we'll do the Gill Sans font first. And remember, if I wanted to apply that font to both of them, I can use the grouping selector, right? H1, comma, H2. And then go font, family, Gill Sans, this one right here. Oh, that's a big list. All right, let's save that and go here, and you can see yeah, that font changed. Cool. Um, now, the letter spacing, like right now, they're just however far apart, I don't know. But uh, we can control that by using letter spacing, just like that. And I think it was two pixels in the notes. Uh, where did it say that? Letter spacing, 25 pixels. That's way too big, I think. That might have been a typo on my part. Yeah, 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 <laughs> check this out. I think it was supposed to be two pixels. Okay. I hope you're following along with the videos, because otherwise you follow those instructions and be <laughs> you do this. Okay, let's watch this. Save. I'm going to save this to We go here. Whoa! Look at that. That actually looks kind of cool, but no. Okay, so just the two pixels just spreads it out a little bit, a little more subtle. Okay, that's good. Um, what else do we have in the notes here? The H2s. Oh, yeah, this was to spread things up a little bit, a top margin. Um, actually, let's look at it again. Yeah, I just felt like this was a little cramped in here. So if we take the H2 and give it a top margin, it'll push the HTML down a little bit. The CSS will push down, right? The margin top will be a space above it. So it'll separate this paragraph and the CSS. Uh, so we're just, we don't want it on the H1, so we're just going to select the H2 and go margin at top, right? We've just done margin and we've done like top and bottom and stuff like that, but we can actually just specify one side. Uh, what did I say again? 25 pixels? 50 pixels. Okay. Save that. And yeah, that just spreads things out a little more space between each section. That's good. All right, um, what else in the notes here? Ah, yes. Well, now let's do the hyperlinks first. A navy color and make bold on hover. Okay, that's really easy again, too. Our links are just A tags, and I want them to have the color of navy. So now they're navy. Beautiful. And on hover, remember we do this colon hover. So when the A tag is in the hover state, we want to make it bold. I don't think we've done this before. This is font weight. And you can go bold or bolder or normal or whatever. Font weight bold. And now when I hover, it gets bold. Cool. Okay, let's take a look at this screenshot again. On, so yeah, we gotta do these colors. Each heading has its own colors. So now this is where the class selector comes in. Because if I wanted to do this orange color first, sorry, where's my notes? The orange color, this is the hex code for it. Remember, if I just select all H2s and go color this, right, H2, which is what the HTML is, it's an H2, this selects all H2 elements, so all H2 elements will be orange. I don't want that. So. What we can do is use something called a class selector. Sorry, one second. Class selector. So what we do is we go to this element, and inside of the opening tag, we add a class attribute, and we give it whatever name we want. I'm just going to simply call it orange. Okay? And now this is a way that we can uniquely identify this H2, is that it's in the class orange. 
Okay, that's good to know. Save that. And now inside of here, we're going to get rid of this. And I'm going to use something called a class selector, which is just a period or a dot followed by the name of the class. And you'll see if you hover your mouse over this, it'll find any element that has the class equal to orange. And then I want to do the color of this color. And you should see now that only this heading has the class of orange, so only it is orange, right? Not this H2 as well. Now, classes can just have one element in the class. It's a lonely class, a single student, right? But you could also, sorry, excuse me, um, go class equals orange on this list item, paragraphs. And now that list item will be in the class as well. And I could add this paragraph, class equals orange. And it would also have those styles applied to it. Now the A tag, of course, has its own color, and that overrides this style. But anyway, so that's how classes work. It gives us a lot more control over specific things that we would like to, to style. Now I obviously don't want this, so we'll delete these, but just wanted to show you the, the power of the, the class selector. Uh, so we can do the same thing for the CSS. I think it was this blue color. So in our HTML, we'll go to the CSS heading here and add a class of blue. And then in here, we'll do a class selector dot blue. And of course, we have to go color first. Save. Now you'll notice that when I save, Prettier always wants me to have two spaces. Um, oh, but down here, the default is four. So we can actually change that. Indent using spaces two. So now whenever I go, it'll also do two and yeah, okay. Anyway, not a huge deal. Um, oh, another weird thing I saw is this VS code here. Um, I must have had another instance of the live server running. So because it ran, it usually runs on port 5500, it's running on port 5501. And it made this VS code settings to say, hey, this is the new port we're using. Anyway, you can actually delete this if you want um, and then run it and over again, it'll pick a new port. And anyway, not a huge deal. Okay, um, just in case you were wondering why that appeared. I'm sidetracking. Let's finish off the CSS. We're almost done. Or are we done? No, we're not done. Oh, I forgot to put this in the style notes. If you look at the picture, See how the corners are rounded a little bit? Oh yeah, and the centering we have to do. Okay, so rounded those corners a little bit. If you remember on my body, oh yeah, we can get rid of the border, but we want border radius. And the, the notes didn't tell us, but let's do maybe 15 pixels. See what that looks like. Sure, just softens it up a little bit. I like that. Um, and then we want to center this. Now, the easy way to do this is to just say, hey, I'm going to select my H1 and go text align center. Done. That was the easy way to do it. However, if we look at the screenshot, we've got this image down here. And the way I'm going to suggest that you want to center this image is by putting the image inside of a paragraph, right? So do a paragraph element and then put the image inside of the paragraph and then select the paragraph and tell it to go text align center. Images are inline elements. They're treated like text. So if you tell the paragraph to go text align center, the image will get centered as well. Okay. And you're going to do that part. Um, yeah, you're going to add that image, the www logo, World Wide Web logo. Put it inside a paragraph, tell that paragraph to center, just like we told the H1 to center. Now, because we're telling two different things to center, I'm going to do some of the work for you. I'm actually going to say, let's create a class called center. And now any element with the class center will go text align center. So right now, obviously, my H1 does not have a class of center. So if I go to my HTML and go to my H1 and give it a class of center, it should now be centered. 
And now when you're finishing off the JavaScript section and having that little logo at the bottom, you can give the paragraph, right? Put this image in a paragraph, give that paragraph a class of center, and then it'll center the image in the paragraph. If you try giving the image a class of center, it will not work. It shouldn't work. I've got to be careful. It shouldn't work. Um, because images, like I said, they're inline elements. They, they don't contain text. They don't center things. But they can be text inside of a paragraph to be centered. Okay. So, yeah. I would like you... Uh, well, anyway, you know, I'll, I'll go over what I want you to do in the next video, I think. Um, but I think for now, that's looking pretty good. I compare it to this. Looks pretty good. This one got a little... I think I did a screen capture on this, so it might look a little narrower and stuff and it's a little smaller. This looks a little bigger, but we followed kind of all the advice with the width and the padding and stuff, so I think this looks good. All right, awesome. Hope you learned a lot. Take care and see you in the next video.